Uh, well, as I promised, because so many people signed up, I'm going to do a little um, revisiting of some basics. So um, in case if you did not play the previous hacking session, right? I'm not going to hack much here. I'm just going to you know talk about it, right? So this is a SQL monitoring report. I assume you've seen some and um, and um, you know a few things to be aware of, right? Of course, you know this is the plan on the left side, um, but um, you know the one of the one of the benefits of SQL monitoring starting from you know 11G is that it actually gives you execution plan line uh, level breakdown. So previously it was not uh, possible to link together which weight event. You know that which weight event, uh, you know, happened on which execution plan line exactly. It wasn't possible to reliably link these together. Starting from Oracle 11G, since Ash has new columns about it, it is possible to link together exactly that 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 many CPU samples happened on this line, and that many you know single block reads and or sorry direct path reads and direct path writes here happened on this line, right? So. And, uh, and um, you know, so, um, and how you would read that is that um, the duration of a query, this is the wall clock human runtime of the query from when the execution phase started, when the execution phase started, all the way to uh, until the cursor was closed or until the cursor was cancelled in the sense that it, it sort of, uh, uh, fetched all the rows it wanted. You see, it has fetched 800 times. It fetched all the rows it wanted, and then it either canceled the query uh, cursor programmatically, or it reached the end of data. You know, when you reach the end of data for your execution, then the cursor will be automatically sort of canceled in the sense that it will be unpinned and then so on, and uh, um, you know, it's ready for the next execution, right? So this wall clock time can be longer than the actual database time. So the duration is the human wall clock time, um, what you perceive, what you see. But the database time is that how much time you actually actively did work for this execution in the database. So in other words, if you work, 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 and then you're idle, you know, because you're fetching some rows and you're idle, you're waiting for the next fetch to come in. You know, if you're idle, then this will not show up as database time. So your cursor is still open. There's still more time due, um, uh, you know, more time due, uh, more rows to fetch. But since you're idle between the fetches, your database session is idle between the fetches, then you see there is this there is this gap, you see, so this missing time here, or it's not really missing, but this, this gap here is basically that, yes, we opened the cursor and we reached the end of data, you know, 6.8 minutes later, we, we had to do five minutes worth of work inside the database to produce the rows and the remaining time in between, uh, that was just uh, application think time. You know, this was, uh, our session was idle waiting for the next um, fetch to come in, for example. Uh, one question that duration is the elapsed time. Can we say say that like that? Yes, duration is the human elapsed time of this query, right? Par, you know, it, parse is not included. Execute is included. Fetch, 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 fetch. End of data. That's the duration, right? But why I would not call duration elapsed time? Uh, you know, uh, I would not use this word because. Elapsed time is also used in like SQL trace and, and, and so on. So actually, let me, let me take it back. So if you mean that is duration the same thing as elapsed time that you see in AWR or SQL trace, then no. So duration is the elapsed time as you see in SQL trace and AWR plus the idle time between fetches. Okay. Anyway, so let's uh, let's uh, stop here. I'm gonna talk. Get back to this, right? And uh, and now, so if you if you want to make something faster inside the database, then you have to focus on database time, because this time are out. You know, the remaining time here, this is not spent inside the database. This is the database being idle, waiting for the application to send the next fetch, 
if you need to make this faster, you need to fetch more rows at a time or, or see if your network settings and latencies are okay. But if you want to make something in, faster inside the database, uh, you know, whatever portion is spent, then you focus on database time. And in Oracle 11, the database time uh, is broken into two columns, right? You see, 20% or 15% of this whole database time, the active time in the database, you know, spent executing this query. This 15% is, is put here. And the remaining 85% of the database time is put here into the wait activity, right? So if you want to make this query faster, you probably should not focus on the CPU much. Because you, the CPU takes only 15% or a small portion of this total execute, execution time in this database. So, you know, even though this says like it's 32% is spent in the hash group by, well, 32% of what? It's 32% of this small chunk. So, you know, I, I probably shouldn't focus here because the biggest chunk of time is spent on IO wait events. If I move my mouse over here, you would see IO wait events, um, you know, like TV file. So this is um, temp IO, I guess. If you move your mouse over in the flash report, you'll see that. So I would take the biggest chunk here and then I would go to this column and look into the biggest chunk. So 70% out of this big chunk here was spent on this line, right? And then you drill down into this, right? So I'm not gonna drill down into this right now. I wanna like focus on this part. So my hacking session, previous hacking session talks more about looking into the row counts and stuff like that, okay? So, and it's worth saying that um, there are, uh, there are, um, uh, um, you know, like when I look into query plans, especially, you know, uh, one of the things what I want to know is that are we spending time on um, uh, data retrieval or are we spending time on data processing? Okay. So you see in this case, if most of the time had, spent, had been spent here, you see, this is a table access or like index something, you know, this is data retrieval. And you may be able to reduce this number, you know, with a better index, or perhaps, you know, if the table is partitioned, make sure that you get partition pruning so you don't have to scan through this whole, whole table doing 11,000 IOs and so on. But in this case, you see, most of the time is spent on a hash join. So this is not the data retrieval from a table anymore. We already have retrieved rows from some tables and are sending it up. But now actually actually doing something with these retrieved rows, that's what takes time, right? And this is where, you know, I would say, hey, you know, our PGA usage is only three megabytes. We are going, we have written 500 megabytes to temp. We have done 47,000 IOPS just to do the hash join, you know, not the data retrieval, that's the hash join itself. I would question like, why are we using only three megabytes for joining three million rows to nine million rows, right? With a hash join. So, because if you used more memory here, or if we sent less rows, somehow, you know, filter more or filter better, then we wouldn't need to do all this IO. Anyway, so that's a query um, bottleneck by data processing and no index will, indexes won't really directly help here because we already have retrieved the rows and uh, you know, we just have to join these millions of rows, right? Okay, so, um, so here's another example from actually, this is from Exadata, you see where, um, you know, like the, the table scan is so fast, the data retrieval is so fast that even if we are, we are actually taking 100 million rows, 40 million rows, 45 million rows from these tables, it's so fast because of Exadata, right? So there is no index or even partition pruning is not going to really help us here, right? Because it's that, that part is already fast, but the actual processing hash joins and group buys, that's the slow part, right? Okay. So, um, so this was 11, but in Oracle 12, Oracle actually has made something better. You see in Oracle 12, we have one column only called activity and both the CPU and the uh, wait events, they are like put into the same column. So, and here's an example 
of uh, the data retrieval. Or, okay, so before I go into the data re retrieval part, you see, um, uh, so in Oracle 12, instead, you see in, in Oracle 11, you had to, you had two columns. You had to know how big this CPU amount was proportionally, and then I know, then you know that 32% of all CPU is actually 32% of this small chunk. So you, you would, it's a bit, actually a bit more complex to kind of, mm, uh, kind of, uh, kind of model this in your head. But in Oracle uh, 12 onwards, both the CPU usage and um, that the um, I/O weights are are uh, sort of uh, normalized onto the same column, right? And um, I will I will explain. There are some anomalies here. I'll get there. So that's that's part of the plan, right? But basically, now you can um, uh, well now you can sort of these columns are mm, uh, sort of uh, you know the the scale is the same, right? So uh, I don't have to like always look back up here to understand how big the CPU proportion is, right? But you might actually see that's weird. You see that uh, how come we are reporting these two things come from different places. The database time comes from basically from SQL monitoring views. It's actually, um, we ask from the OS how much CPU we have used, but activity comes from ASH. So, and it's interesting, look, this looks like 20, 20, 25%, right? 20%, but this, the same CPU listed in a different location is only like five or ten percent. So what's going on here? I'll explain that as well. There is a anomaly here. Um, so, uh, but anyway, so what I wanted to say that in Oracle twelve now you have only one column, right? And you just can zoom in and you see CPU seems to be fairly small proportion here. And this is a a but this is a case where all the time is spent in data retrieval. This is where a better index will help. Right, because we are spending all this time trying to get, you know, that I don't know, some rows, and something has gone wrong here because we've done like eleven million I/O requests, trying to do an index skip scan, and we haven't found a single row yet. We haven't returned a single row yet. Right. Anyway, so that's the data. That's Oracle twelve. Okay. So, um, and uh, one more thing. So. Uh, here is another example from Oracle 12. Um, it's a much quicker query that um, you see, again, all, almost all the time is spent on data retrieval. But you see the index access itself, you know, we have done nine IO requests only, right? So the index access itself, reading the index blocks, that doesn't take, hasn't taken much time. But actually, now that you have, now that you have these index blocks, and you get row IDs from this index. Now you have to go to and actually read these row IDs, these blocks in from the table level. And you see, we have done 14,000 reads from the table. But this is what, what I often see when there is an inefficient index in the sense that, uh, that um, you know, uh, we have some columns in the index, but not, not all columns that are used for filtering, right? So, uh, so um, you see, um, well, actually, this is a, yeah. So that maybe maybe not may not be the best example, but we have a we have um, gotten fifteen thousand row IDs from the index, and apparently the index was cached, you know. But you know, index blocks if you do a range scan, they're pretty densely packed. Fifteen thousand rows may fit into you know thirty blocks, right? <laughs> uh, you know, so and then the because the index is smaller. The index is cached much more likely as well. So we haven't actually, we only have read nine, we have done nine IR requests for the index, right? And now that we have this 15,000 row IDs, you see, uh, we have actually ended up doing 14,000 uh, IR requests. Perhaps the cache helped a little, but you know, uh, we, have, we had to do a lot of table IO just to feed these rows up to the nested loop, who then, you know, after the nested loop, uh, you know, nested loop has sent all these 15,000 rows to the group by and then and, and so on. The group by has actually only returned uh, three rows after the grouping to the, you know, some sort of cube join or like, to the, like a, like a cube, a group by, right? Which has then done for actually um, broken this down uh, rows a bit more. So, um, so, um, uh, 
so what I want to say here is that um, this is not an index talk today, but uh, often the, what shows up is this, that when you have an inefficient index, the index access itself is not that bad, but actually having to get all these rows from the table after the index, that's, that's a problem, right? And, and this is where I would look into, like, are all the columns that are used for in a where clause for this index, are all of these columns part of this index, right? And you know, the order matters or helps us all, but I'm not gonna go in there, right? Okay, so, um, what else? I think this is pretty much the same. Um, up here, well, yeah, actually, I don't, I don't think there is much more to say here. This is a more complex plan and looks like data processing is spending most of the time. And there was one question like, why why do we see weight events here? This is a group by, I mean, why do, why do we see this guy a weight event. But when you move your mouse over here, you would see direct path read temp and direct path write temp. If, you know, we are, we are sending 144 million rows from this child operator, we are sending that many rows to the group by, right? And after grouping, uh, we still have 4 million rows left after the group by is done, you know. We, we collapsed, we, we have collapsed 144 uh, million rows to 4 million. So the group by seems to be very, very granular. It's not like a group by country. It's more like a group by, um, you know, like a, like a person's, uh, you know, ID or social security number or something like that, right? Four million rows have survived after the grouping was done. Well, you have to keep these four million rows somewhere while you're doing the group by. You're keeping it in, in the PGA, and since the PGA manager only gave you 74 megabytes to work with, all these rows did not fit in memory, so you had to spill to temp. And when you have to spill to temp, you have to do disk IO requests. We have 24 gigabytes in temp, right? And all these 200,000 IO requests, reading and writing 24 gigabytes, that will cause these weight events. You know, CPU usage as well, but weight events, right? And again, how do you make this smaller? Well, either increase the memory by running the query in parallel or something like that, or reduce the amount of rows, well, not this one, reduce the amount of rows sent up from here. Because if you do, if you do a group by, by country, you only would have like two, 300 rows to keep in track in memory. But if you do, do a group by country, city, and address and human name or something, you're gonna have a big hash table that you need to keep somewhere, right? So this is just general advice. So I'm not gonna go into more specific because it would take too much time. Okay, so, so, this is, and so this was the sort of the background, what I wanted to revisit. 